Hi, I'm Dr. Rehani. Welcome back to our course on increasing the longevity and lifespan of your pet. In this section, we're going to talk about environmental poisons. So let's first talk about outdoor poisons that can affect our pet. So one of them that's quite well known by most people is antifreeze or ethylene glycol. And the problem is that it doesn't need to be something obvious like your car that's leaking all over your driveway, but it can be something simple and something that you may not think about, such as somebody else's car that's leaked into puddles or in the street water. So it's important that when you are walking your dog or your cat, some people do walk their cats and that's fantastic, that you don't let them drink in puddles that are on the street because you really don't know what's in them if there are if there is some antifreeze or something else poisonous in that puddle water. Pesticides and fertilizers on grass, gardens, and fruit. Definitely this is a problem for not only our animals but ourselves as well. And it is ingested by us and our pets. The problem with our pets is that they are walking on the fertilizer, so it's on their pads, and then they come in and groom themselves. So if you do think this is a problem in your area, because there's a lot of people using um, the things to make their grass look prettier and lots of pesticides and you're walking your pet on that grass, be sure to wash their feet when you come in and dry them off. And how clean is your water? Is it a well water that has heavy metals in it or are there other contaminants in it? So this is another problem that we have with our environment. And it's not a bad idea, we'll talk about it later in the course on what you can do about, about that water. So other problems, detergent. Uh, if you've spilled some in your laundry room and your cat walks through it, they will groom themselves and ingest it. Cleaning supplies that we clean our floors with. Of course, our animals are lying on the floor, so this is another problem. So it's not a bad idea to use something more natural like vinegar and water instead of the high chemical cleaning solutions. Poisonous foods, which we'll talk about later on in the diet section and household outdoor poisons. There are a list of plants, and here is a, a URL link, which I'll add to the course as well, and you can have a look there to see if there's plants in your environment, outside or inside, that are poisonous for your animals. So we'll go through some common plants, both indoor and outdoor. So this one here that you see, this pretty plant, is a spider plant. I'm not going to try and say the Latin name of it. Chlorophytum comosum. Some of you out there that uh, specialize in plants are probably laughing at my pronunciation, but that's okay. So of these ones, the poisonous part includes and if ingested can cause vomiting and upset stomach. And the main poisonous part of that plant is the leaf. All right, so this plant we see to the side are those beautiful ones that we see flowering. We will sometimes see them in the spring, but this particular one is an autumn crocus. And the poisonous part includes the bulbs and the petals themselves. It's part of the Linaceae family, which contain uh, colchicine. And the problem with this one is that the signs can be seen immediately or they can actually be delayed for several days. So if your pet ate something, you saw him or her eat this, or you found it later and it was all destroyed, and he seemed fine, and you're thinking, well, you know, it's been like a day or two and he's okay, and then he starts to show symptoms on day three or four or day five, it could still be that plant that he or she ingested. Okay, so these are highly toxic. If ingested, they can cause severe vomiting, bleeding of the gastrointestinal tract, liver and kidney damage. So very important if you see your pet eating this or find evidence that it was eaten that you consider there may have been a poisoning that occurred. Uh, it can also cause respiratory failure and death. The next plant we're going to talk about is the azalea. These are really common. A lot of people use them in their gardening outside. It's in the same family as the rhododendron but a smaller flower and a smaller plant, more bushy. If ingested, they can cause vomiting, diarrhea, and excess drooling. 
coma and death if veterinary care is not given. So your veterinary may not know what's wrong, right? When you take in your pet and it's vomiting and stuff. So if there's any possibility it's eaten this plant, you need to let them know. And if they don't need to know, if they don't know what to do, they need to do some research or talk to a poison control center because there will be specific antidotes and treatment depending on the kind of plant that is swallowed or eaten. Okay, so cyclamen, a very pretty plant that we see there. It tends to show up in the springtime. Can cause severe vomiting and death. Again, very important that you know what plant your pet may have eaten. Now this is a really pretty plant. I uh, was given one of these very recently as a gift. Uh, Kalanchoe, and they come in different flowers, um, but you can tell by the leaf, the pattern of the leaf and the shape of it, that it is a, a Kalanchoe. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But it can have a different kind of flower, so keep that in mind. So this plant, if ingested, can cause vomiting, diarrhea, and heart arrhythmias. Not a good thing. Okay, so very serious poisoning from this one. Now the next one, most of you probably have seen these outside or you may have received a gift of them. The lily, very beautiful plant. There's two types, there's a poisonous and non-poisonous. So the non-poisonous lilies are the Peace Peruvian and Calla lilies, which contain oxalate crystals. Now these are the non-poisonous ones, right? But they're still poisonous because <laughs> they can cause irritation to the mouth, the tongue, the pharynx, the esophagus and result in drooling. However, the poisonous type of lilies are the tiger lily. That one there you see on the left is a tiger lily. Uh, the day lilies, Asiatic, Easter, and Japanese show lilies. These are all highly toxic to cats. Ingest them of even a small amount, two or three petals or leaves, can cause severe kidney failure and death. If any suspicion, the cat must be treated ASAP. Okay, this flower we're seeing here is the oleander, and the poisonous part includes the leaves and flowers. It's an outdoor shrub with very delicate flowers. If ingested, whether it's the leaf or the flower, it can cause severe vomiting, reduced heart rate, and death. The next one we're going to talk about is the Diefenbachia, which is the plant you see there. That tends to be more of an indoor plant. The poisonous part includes the leaves. If ingested, it can cause intense irritation of the mouth, drooling and nausea, vomiting, and difficulty swallowing. Okay, so this could, the problem with this is it could look like something else. It could actually look like kidney disease. And then the veterinarian does the diagnostics, comes back as not that, and they're wondering, well, what could it be? So it's very important that you check your environment if your animal's not well. Uh, to see if there's any possibility that he or she has chewed on or ingested any of these kinds of plants. Knowledge is power. Daffodils, one of the very first plants that come out in the spring. The poisonous part includes the bulb plant or the actual flower petals. If ingested, they can cause severe vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and cardiac arrhythmias or respiratory depression. So they can cause the heart to act strange. They can cause uh, the breathing to be depressed, which of, can, of course can cause death, and severe tissue irritation and drooling. Another common plant, this beautiful plant is Lily of the Valley. All parts of this plant are highly poisonous, including the red berries. If ingested, it can cause vomiting, diarrhea, reduced heartbeat, severe arrhythmia of the heart, and seizures. The next one we're going to talk about is tulips, my favorite flower. Hyacinths as well, very pretty. If ingested, the bulb or the plant parts, they can cause tissue irritation to the mouth and the esophagus, so that's the throat where your food goes down. It can cause profuse drooling, vomiting and diarrhea, and if large amounts are eaten, increase in heart rate and breathing changes. So very important to keep in mind that 
if your animal's not well, it's not necessarily something internal. It's not something that is wrong with your pet in an internal thing, but it could be a poison and it could be something as simple as a flower that you planted and your dog decided to eat the bulb. Um, very important if you're a gardener and you have plants outside or plants inside that you review everything you have and make sure there's no evidence that your pet has eaten any of these, okay? And again, with puppies or kittens where you don't know their behavior, if you have house plants, either don't have them if they're poisonous, give them to a friend, or uh, put them somewhere super high up where your animal's not gonna be able to reach. And if you're gardening and your dog's out there with you, I've heard many stories about the dog digging out the roots and eating them, or getting them while you're doing something else. So please keep in mind that your garden should be safe for your pet and also for other animals as well. If you have any questions on this, please feel free to message me on the course because the more information we have, the more that we can help everyone's animals. Okay, and that's it for this section.